Let's walk through building a brand new data flow in Azure Data Factory, and let's use the pivot transformation. Pivot transformation is very, very powerful when you're performing aggregations. And in uh, Data Factory, it also has some complexities that uh, require some understanding. I want to walk you through those today. And it also exposes the capability that uh, Mapping Data Flows brings, uh, which is what we call schema drift. So schema drift is the ability to handle columns that come in or change in your source and are not already predefined in your data set. And the pivot transformation actually surfaces that as well because each column that is generated from a dynamic row value is a brand new column. And so I'm going to talk to you about how you can uh, create that as a column meta metadata that you can then use in your data flow. So let's get started. I'm going to start with a new source, which is where you always start in data flows. And for this source, I'm going to use my loans. Um, sample data. So I'm going to call it uh, my source loans. I'm going to use my loans data set. Now my loans data set has a projection already defined. So um, the data set already has the defined schema. So the projection is simply a copy of that schema. Notice that it is a CSV file. So all of the data types default to string. You can edit these manually if you'd like to change data types. You can ask ADF to uh, detect the data types for you. Or you could uh, do what I prefer, which is to perform casting within a derived column. And now then you have a separate step that does all of your data types. I'm going to save the, that detail for another video. Let's go ahead and pivot this data now. So there is no schema drift at this point. Everything is well defined. When I introduce pivot, now I'm going to create some dynamic data. And these will be dynamic columns. And the reason for that is because what pivot does, let's take a look at the data, by the way. This is probably something I should have done earlier. But let's do a data preview. So I've got my data flow debug session turned on. So now I can take a look at the data and we can examine it. What you're going to see is that <clears throat> we have a couple of things that I want to um, analyze within my data set. So what I'm going to do is I want to take, I'm going to look for, I'm going to create uh, new columns that are going to have the value for grade in it. So these are the gradings of these loans. And I want to create new columns for those that have the aggregated count of how many loans fall into those categories. And I want that to be by another dimension. I want that to be um, sliced by zip code. All right. So in the pivot, what we'll do to create that kind of aggregation, actually, let me go back to loans for a second. I do want you to see something is that there is no um, schema drift in here. Every column is matched up. So if one of these columns was drifted, you would see this icon show up next to the column. And then you could click this map drifted, which will drift those, which will, sorry, which will map those drifted columns to column names. Back to pivot. So let's go ahead and build a pivot for this. So I decided that I wanted to group by zip code. So this will give me the total count of um, every type of grade of loan per zip code. The pivot key is going to be where the values will be picked out of to create new columns. So I'm going to pick those out of the uh, grade column. And if you wanted to only pull out specific values from grade, you could type those in here under value. But I'm going to, I want everything to be dynamically created. Now, under pivot is where you build the name of the new columns and also the aggregation you want to use. So I want a count of the different grades per zip code. So I'm going to say counts one. This will give me this always add one every time that a new uh, value is found under that grade. And let's call this column. This is where you want to give a nice, interesting name to your new column. Let's call this number of because it is calculating the count of each. Okay, we'll call it number of. Now I want to group all of these new columns together, so I'm going to use the normal column arrangement. And the name of the new columns is going to be based upon this column name pattern you use up here. So this is going to be the prefix plus the expression plus the middle pivot key value and then suffix. So for the ending suffix, I'm going to actually, let me actually put an underscore on here so that we have some spacing. It'll be number of underscore the grade, which is going to be A, B, A through F. And then at the end of that, I want to say underscore, um, we'll call it uh, counts. And I might want to change that a little bit, but this will give you some idea. Let's take a look at what this looks like. This is what the nice um, way that you can do iterative developments and unit testing within Dataflow Debug. Uh, because pivot, because the complexity is a pivot, I, I think that using Debug is very, very helpful under Data Preview. 
uh, in data factory. So let's take a look at what we're getting now. Okay, so there's my zip code. This was my grouping. Uh, each one of the grades got a new column. There's A through F. Now it has the number of, which was my prefix. Uh, what well, was actually the, um, to be more exact, it's the name of that I gave to my aggregation, which is the count. So this means that there were 102 A's in this zip code right here. B's 163, so on and so forth. There are only nine F's. So that's pretty good. Um, and then my suffix was count. So let's leave that at that. You can always you know, go in and, and modify these namings as you like based on those prefixes, suffixes, and the names. But it's pretty, it's, it's good enough. That's pretty interesting. Now notice that each of one, one of these has a, a drifted icon next to it. That's because these were dynamically generated columns, so they're not already defined in the data set, and it's not part of the projection. So um, Data Factory sees those as drifted. Before we go any further, there's one thing that kind of is bothering me, which is that there's a bunch of null values in here because it looks like there's some bad data in here. These are obviously not good zip codes. So let's let me do a side little um, additional kind of um, demo for you or, or uh, description for you, and that is that I want to filter out the bad data. So let's make this data look a little bit better. Let's go ahead and filter out those bad zip codes. Now the way to do that, the way that I would do that anyway, there's many different ways to do it, but um, the zip code in this case is going to have that set length based on the data I saw of five. So let's do the length of zip code. I typed what I was talking about. Five. Let's do length of zip code equal equal five. So this is a filter. This means only um, time, the, um, that means that this expression must evaluate the true for the rows to pass past this point. All of the rows will be dropped. So I can test this here directly in my expression builder, and I can see with check marks whether or not these passed. If they um, evaluate the false, then the rows will get an X on it. And I can see that all of the values with the checks are indeed the zip code, so that's good. So let's get, see what we get now. Now that we're filtering that data out, we can go back to our pivot. We can hit refresh, and we should be filtering out those bad rows. All right, and indeed we are, and that looks a lot better to me. Now, here's one of the catches with Pivot. When I go to use these new columns later on in my data flow, like for example, I want to sync these new columns, they are not part of the metadata, and the reason for that is because they are drifted dynamic columns. So if I add a sync on here, in this case, I'm going to keep all my data in the um, in the lake. I'm not going to put it in the database. So I'm just going to put it into a folder and let Data Factory decide the names of the files as it uh, writes those. When I go to my mapping, if I have auto mapping on, all those columns will get written as they are called. So this will work just fine. But if I want to use them here within um, the UI, within uh, Data Flow, the designer, I can't see them. So if I turn off auto mapping, all I see is zip code, because zip code is the only column that's actually uh, defined within that's pivot, and that is the grouping. And that's why it's there. And you can see that also if I go to inspect, that's all I see. Go back to the pivot, I go to inspect, I look at the output metadata, and all that I see is zip code. Right? So how do I make those hardened in part of my projection? Now projection is usually set in the source. In fact, there's a tab in the source uh, within Dataflow for projection. But it's not part of this, and that's why it's not, since it's not in my projection, these new dynamic columns are then drifted. So what I need to do here at this point is I go over to my data preview. I can either do this manually. I need to use what's called the by name function within uh, Dataflow to make these into columns or to reference them. But we have this helper called map drifted. When I do that, Dataflow will automatically create columns for each of these by those names. So now I have a column name for each of those. If I go over to my sync and I update uh, my inspect, I now see those as columns. And so back in my mapping, if I wanted to map them individually, I could. Now, of course, like I said before, auto mapping will work without you needing to do this extra step with uh, drifted fields in Dataflow. You just have to have on your sync, you must have allow scheme and drift set. Otherwise, we will only sync the named columns. If you don't want to use named columns individually, you can also do um, uh, rule-based mapping. So when you do a mapping, you could also do a rule. And that rule could be as simple as matching on everything. Um, so if I just say that's any column that comes in um, equal to true, 
then go ahead and map those. That's another way to do every column. This, however, when you do the mapping of your new dynamic columns, gives you a lot of power to be able to work with these columns. And now these columns will also be available to you as part of uh, the expression builder. So if I were to do another, let's say, a filter later on in my data flow, now I'll have those new dynamic columns for my pivot available to me in my expression builder. If I go over to my input schema, I'll have those so they'll be part of IntelliSense. Okay, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.